there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Unboxing here on Pastiche of Skin. No, this time it's not a loot crit. No, it's not a derm crit. It is something completely different. It's PlayStation VR! Yes, we have a PlayStation VR in the house. We are going to be playing virtual reality games here on the channel. I'm ready to make a fool of myself. Are you ready to laugh at me as I make a fool of myself? Because uh, this is a thing that contains it all. All right, obviously I've actually lifted the lid off the top of this box so that one can be set in display. This is the actual one containing everything. Um, if I could actually put it in front of camera, I would. Uh, but I want to be able to reach in and take out things and show them to you here on the show. So, of course, first thing in the top of the box is the manual. Quick start guide. Listing out all the things that should be included in your box. It is a HDMI cable, a USB cable, an AC adapter, an AC power cord, a VR headset, communication cable, a VR headset, stereo headphones, a processor unit, and a printed manual. Now, if that made your head spin, you're probably not ready for technology, are you? Um, this is a really simple setup. Uh, I've obviously seen this being set up in a number of places before. It's a PS4. It runs to a box. The box runs to a power supply. The power supply runs to... keeps the, the headset going. There's a USB cable that comes out of it. Essentially, it's a breakout box that plugs in your PS4 that allows you to do um, separate signals from different devices. So we're going to go and look through all the bits and pieces that are in here. And um, just so I want to take a look at build quality and stuff. I've, I haven't got any of these in my hands yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not these are um, weird, best way to say it, uh, or unbalanced, or generally uh, of a crappy build quality. Because I haven't seen anybody complaining about the build quality of the PlayStation VR. Nobody's saying it's, it feels like a Samsung Gear VR on steroids or anything. It's just been um, a VR. Uh, oh well, they actually have a <laughs> they have a separate. All right, the manual tells you exactly how to do it with pictograms, but they also have a leaflet that you can actually scan in and take a look at if you want to make sure that you didn't make a mistake while putting it together. Uh, they are making sure people aren't going to make mistakes. So that's a good sign. So what's the first thing that we have in the box here? This one is of course uh, AC adapter cables, uh, HDMI to HDMI, and AC adapter cables. Both of those just connectors inside that box. I'll put you aside. Put these up here so that you can actually see them as they come out. So you can see that there's plenty in this goddamn box. Uh, does this have to lift up? No, that doesn't lift up. This comes out first. Okay. And what is inside this box? Okay, this is where we actually get to the bits and pieces that are interesting. So what's in here? Uh, warranties, 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 all the warranties to make sure you know that they're safe and sound. And the first part of the actual processor. And this is actually kind of hefty. I'm surprised that the processor box was um, is as big as it is. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Okay. So this runs off its own power supply and has its own fan system and everything. Um, oh, well, ain't that cute. So it actually... That's where your HDMI going out to your... I'm pretty sure that is what isn't it? Yeah, HDMI TV, HDMI PlayStation. So HDMI from PlayStation comes in here. Uh, one goes out to the TV from here. So essentially this activates as a splitter. And as a splitter, it has a HDMI and connector out for your headset. So I'm assuming that runs power and HDMI to your headset for uh, tracking, well, powering the lights and uh, HDMI signal for image. So, wow. Okay. Simple. Simple little extender box that it goes into. Now, Sony has specifically stated that this does not have any processing power onto itself. It's not an external processor, external GPU, which was uh, what a lot of people imagined it was whenever the PlayStation VR originally came out. And I would have thought that would have been the smartest move on their part to actually put an external self-powered GPU the same way um, any, well, any laptop PC really works now because you actually can buy external cards to plug into. Of course, the rest of this is... Cables, so that one looks like USB to micro USB. That one is our AC adapter. So I'll pop these back into the box for now. And of course, I'll be taking these out plenty and putting them all set up later on. But uh, keep them all reasonably tidy. Again, more boxes up here. And what else we got in here? Oh, we got demo discs. Demo disc. All right, the PlayStation VR demo disc. So this will be one of the first things we'll be going through on. The channel there's a bunch of demos available that were available in the uh, japanese and hong kong stores now one of them is finally available over here danganronpa vr i'm looking forward to giving that a try even though danganronpa is not one of my favorite games in the world but it's just the fact i want to play games that are a little less played on the channel i'm not going to be playing uh, valkyrie um was it not gunjack uh e valkyrie or games that are actually um being released as the first in early titles on psvr all those launch titles have been covered. 
in extensive detail by people, but what I want to do is pick up some of the games that have VR functionality added into them so that they are essentially like it's an added value that I might already have in my library. So example being uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which actually has an added VR component. Or uh, let me think of other things like the 100, 100 foot robot golf on VR would be interesting because I want to see if it actually does, if the motion and the controls and everything goes well with that. I imagine I'm probably going to need move controllers to do this. So uh, if you've got a particular move controller, uh, pass it on to me. I will go and find my own ones in short time and due time. But until then, I may need to borrow ones from uh, my active audience. Yes, if any of you guys happen to have one lying in the back. There was a problem with the PlayStation move controllers that if you had them for long enough but hadn't been using them and let the battery run completely dry, then you needed to buy a replacement lithium-ion battery because uh, letting lithium-ion batteries completely drain is actually bad for them. So they just stop, they just stop taking charge. So a um, little bit of cardboard out of the way there. It's sitting in. Oh, we're on to the big stuff now. So, all right, I'm going to need to lift this all out at once, aren't I? Yep, there we go. So we got our breakout box that goes to the actual PSVR, I imagine. So that is... Is this just an extension? I think this is actually... This is just an extension cable that you just run down the back. So imagine these are the two that go into the uh, breakout box. And then this is a like a breakout box from the breakout box that actually brings them back together again into another two cables. So there's probably two cables that run from the headset here, which is damn light, which is really surprising. To uh, again this, and then that extends out. Now I'm looking at this. I'm going like right. They have a HDMI cable that's extendable of your own accord. You can get to your own extenders to do that. But of course, this isn't. This is. Um, proprietary power connector slash data connector, which is a bit shit because on setups like mine's, it's going to mean that I'll have to actually do some rejigging of the studio to be able to make use of it. Uh, especially, especially if I decide to start uh, using the open source tools that allow you to use the PSVR with the allows you to use the PSVR with the PC. Which, oh wow, that is short, man. That is a short cable. No, no, where do they pack that in with it? Because you need the damn thing? Right, is there anything else inside this box that I'm missing out? Just to make sure. No, nah, that's actually flat. Yeah, that's crap. So just close that up. Put you over there. So, the PSVR headset itself. Um, wow. It is really light. It is shockingly light. As in, I'm perturbed by its lightness. As in... I, I'm surprised people hadn't complained about it feeling it feeling tacky or badly put together or anything. Oh, oh, that is weird. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know if I'm cool with that. Is that meant to lock into place? Oh, oh, right. That's it there. Right. Um, I'm going to try and put this thing on, but I'm trying to make sure I don't break it in the process of doing so. Is that calibrating, I think? Okay, guys, glass is off. Um, I'm obviously going to make an absolute tit of myself doing this, but let's see if it actually fits on reasonably well. Okay, so from what I know, it's actually heads up in that way. Wow. All right, I can see bugger all. <laughs> so that's one of the things I was actually curious about is actually how... Well, the curling around the eyes. I'm going to have to wear that really high up my head until I get this really well positioned. Because I have a huge head. I really do have a huge head. Like, I mean, that is it. That is it extended almost to the limit of the headset. Just going to go see here. Yeah, that, that, am I, turning that dial tightens it. And that releases it. And there is very... Very little give on that headset. So I know, there. Are, I think it's hinged on the front here so I could actually be able to lift it up, but I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what way that actually lifts up so that the actual visor goes up. Lift. I know there's a hinge in here somewhere. Um, no? Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Can you repeat the question? But the one thing I did notice whenever I put that on, is that there's a lot of face space. There's a lot of space between like where your eyes are and the rest of the body of the PSVR is. And um, I, I honestly, I think I could wear my glasses in this, no problem. Although the nose guard, the, the rubber guard on it, doesn't feel, it makes a nice seal. So you don't have light leak 
coming in on your three sides, but uh, I've got a very wide nose, so it actually feels like it's, I can feel pressing in on my nose. I'll probably sound extremely nasal or whenever I look back over this audio to see what it sounds like, but um, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting this hooked up, but it does fit, I mean, yeah. Oh, wait a second, there's something wrong with this glass. I think there's actually, this has been scuffed in transit. All right, that are my eyelashes are impressively long, which they are. I do have beautiful lashes, but um, wow, unless I brush the glass with my eyelids there. I'm going to need to give that a proper cleaning because that's going to make gaming a little bit more difficult. But yeah, that's the PlayStation VR unboxed and available for us to play here on the station. The intention is that we're going to play a lot more of the smaller uh, sp experience games on PlayStation VR for the first few while on the channel. Uh, mostly because it'll be easier to test them and there'll be a lot of sit-down experiences in those that you don't need to be able to move quite as much. But what we have set up here, uh, which is completely off-screen to you guys, you wouldn't, you'll never ever see this stuff on screen, is um, a series of poles that run up and across over the top of the studio space. And what I would really love to do is be able to get... Uh, a, key, a, a feet cable free VR experience where I can't, I, I'm obviously I don't, I'm not going to use room scale because room scale requires like the PS, v, the Vive, the HTC Vive or like a multiple kind of like sensor array or whatever else. But with the PlayStation, at least you can turn with 360, turn around, have your back. So while I'm actually standing at the green screen, I might actually put myself in the position of being the character looking towards. So if I can run the camera around and run the VR around, I'll actually have my back to you guys, but have a full view of the game without cables and just myself kind of like in green screen reduced down and frame the I'm, I'm just it's something that i haven't seen other people doing it's essentially ar gaming but just because you're getting a duplicate of whatever my vision is as, as long as the character stays center frame it makes sense for me to be there as well almost as if i was playing a third you know, almost as if you're watching me play a third person game that's what the intention is i want to give that a try and we'll see how it works although uh games that are in first person break that a little bit but we'll see we'll see how it goes together uh, the next thing after that is to use the PSVR with PC and use the open fra source framework that's actually available to uh, use a PSVR with P PC VR games. Now, that is very experimental, so some games will work, some games won't. But what part of the whole process of doing those is to actually have videos showing which ones do, which ones don't, and what's going on inside that development circle for people hacking away to make this into the, the VR choice, even though it's actually... The, the lowest spec, lowest cost solution. And I really, really, really can't wait to actually be immersed in games like that. Also, the fact that this is used, can be used as like a cinema screen. You can just, you can actually just say you make a 125 inch screen in your face by putting Blu-rays into your drive and just hooking up through this for cinema mode. Ordinary HDMI devices run through this. So I'm curious to see what it looks like whenever you do it with a PC monitor and stuff. As long as I don't break this, I'm just gonna try out, experiment, and see what I can do. So guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been a unboxing video for PlayStation VR. I'm going to be doing two more unboxings today, specifically. Uh, for the live people, you're going to get to see those back to back with you guys on YouTube. It's uh, going to be out very soon, so you'll be able to check them out. Uh, they're, they're time sensitive, so they have to be out soon. So don't worry, you won't have to wait too long. You'll just have to wait a little while. That's the reason why you should go to twitch.tv forward slash past each skin. You get to see all this content a little bit earlier. In fact, if you want to see it as early as you possibly can see, uh, without having to catch the live broadcast, you can, of course, always go to patreon.com forward slash Deadly Belly, which uh, will be changed to past each of skin soon. But um, I've, I've had the Patreon up for a long while, but nobody's actually contributed to it. So, um, yeah, I'll probably get this stuff uh, up to you guys really soon to check out. And thank you very much for watching. Again, try to stick around if you're on the live broadcast for more videos. And if you're not on the live broadcast, I will see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.